All right, guys and girls, welcome to another episode of Astral Auto Repairs. Can you dig it? All right, check it out. Right here on the side of me, I got a 2004 Nissan Maxima. Customer's complaint is running bad and the check engine light is on. So we're gonna find out what's going on with this vehicle. Coming up on Astral Auto Repairs. This channel is a member of the Astral Stars, which means we have a zero tolerance policy against the harassment of others. Anybody who violates that policy will be banned. For further information, please visit www.theastralstars.com. All right, guys, the first thing you want to do is grab your Ortel AL539B. Don't grab any other machine. Any other machine will not work. You got to grab this one. <laughs> All right, and for more, to know how to use this machine more, check out our new channel, Ortel AL539B, and I'll put a link in the description below. All right, the first thing we do is let's connect it. Our diagnostic connector is up under the dash, right to the left of the steering wheel. Right about there. So let's get this plugged up. What the heck? What the heck? There we go. All right, it's on. Let's put our key in the on position and go to the codes. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we're going to go into read codes. Let's see what we got here. Uh, PO171, system two lane bank one, and PO174, system two lane bank two. Now, right off the top, this is telling me that I have some kind of leak, some kind of air leak, vacuum leak. Um, now there's two ways of diagnosing this one you're gonna need a smoke machine to do a smoke test Which can be kind of expensive if you don't have a smoke machine or you take it to your local auto parts uh, auto repair store shop And they'll charge you like 60 80 bucks to do this test <coughs> I'm gonna show you a quick way of doing that, but to do it this way I'm about to tell you you're gonna need this Autel AL 539B All right, so what I'm gonna do is I want to escape out of here and I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna start the car up Okay, now I want to go down to live data. Again, guys, you got to go check out our new channel because I mean, I show you how to, I show you things how to use do with this machine that, and this machine can do things the five thousand dollar and ten thousand dollar machines cannot do. All right, I want to go to view data. I'm going to go to complete. Look at that right there. Our short term fuel trim and our long term fuel trim. Look how high those numbers are. Again, guys, I mean, you gotta go check out our new channel and it'll teach you. And I teach you. How many times are you gonna say it? Because to sit here and have to tell them what this is, man, they should know this by now. Some of the guys already know this. <coughs> Alright, now since Sylvia spoke, Sylvia, what, did, what, did, <laughs> what should those numbers be? Zero. Okay, now they're way up there, so what does that mean? There's too much air coming in, so the computer's trying to even it out by adding fuel to it. Exactly. Now that's bank one right there now we're gonna scroll down and shift it there's number two same thing that is a high number right there guys now this is what we're gonna do guys let's go to escape now we're gonna go down to custom okay now what I want to do is I want to Go short term one. Whoops, no, no, no. Dang it. Short term one. What the, what the, how the heck do I pick that? Left. Okay. Long term. Scroll down. Short term two and long term two. Hit OK. Now I just got those four on the screen. Those numbers are high. So, what we're going to do, we're going to leave the car running. And what we're going to do is take this and bring it outside so we can see this while we're working on the vehicle all right let me set this up and I'll be right back okay all right guys we got it set up out there the numbers are sky high guys look at those numbers so what we need to do is take off this top cover right here and these covers held on my five hex bolts five millimeter I got my pole driver, 
with my little five millimeter hex adapter on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and take these four bolts out. Be right back. All right guys, let's take our cover off. Now, what's happening here is we got air leaking in from somewhere. So what we're gonna do is take some carburetor cleaner and we're gonna spray along the engine. Wherever that leak is, this, the carburetor cleaner is gonna suck it in. The, I mean, the engine's gonna suck the carburetor cleaner in and it's gonna compensate for that on our screen once we get to that, find that leak. Now, it's, it is not gonna affect the long-term fuel trim. It is, unless it's a, it's, I have to do that for a long time, but it will immediately affect the short term on both sides. So, I'm gonna go here. I see some. You see, I just. Huh. So that leak is intermittent somewhere. Because I sprayed over here. Now, anything before this throttle body, it will not affect it, all right? It's gotta be something over here. So let's keep going around. Really? Now it's too much fuel. Huh? Yeah, I saw that number drop down too. Tell me when you that number. It's gonna go down. Negative. It got. It's got to go down and stay there. What's it doing? Negative fourteen. Negative eleven. Negative three. The short term on both. No. Just one. Just one. Oh, you need to make Sorry, people. Negative on. Um, uh, bank one. And bank two? Bank above. Is that seven? Seven? Yeah. Eight. Oh. Now I went back up. Now it's Hey, I'm over here. It's all over the place. Negative 25 on bank one, and bank two is almost at zero. Down all right, look where I'm at, guys. I'm spraying right over here, down by the intake, the plenum gasket, or upper intake gasket. So somewhere over here, where am I at now? Bank one is at negative 25 and bank two is at three. Yep, okay. So I know now, we gotta pull this plenum up to see what the heck is going on up under here. We'll be right back. All right guys, we gotta take our plenum off and the easiest way to do this is start from here and we're gonna work our way around. And to start it off, we got our air tube right here, which is held on by a clamp. So we get us a flat screwdriver and loosen up this clamp. Okay, we're gonna loosen up the clamp. Then what we're gonna do is go back here. Oh, this cover's already off, huh? Oh. Our map mass airflow sensor, unplug it. Push the plug the tab in right here to the connector and pull back. Then you got two latches right over here. One, two, pop them out. That's going to pick this assembly up and down here is setting into like slots. So you got to pull it up and back. But don't pull it yet because we're not done yet. All right. Next thing you got to do is got clamps over here. So you want to take some needle nose. Bring the clamp back. Twist it. Bring it back. Take that tube. Pull it off. And now take the whole assembly and put this to the side. We'll be right back. All right, guys, the next thing we'll do, we got our evap hose here. Got a little clamp right here. 
pull that clamp back. Carefully twist the holes. Pull that off. Lean that to the side. Now here's your throttle body. We're going to disconnect it from right here. This plug right here. Take this connector, this little tab. Squeeze it in towards the connector. Push back. Lean that down to the side. Then you got your solenoid right here. Same thing. Push the tab in to the connector and pull it out. The next thing you want to do, grab your big bill. Yeah, I love this thing. When we, what I have here is a deep 10 millimeter 3 8 drive socket and you got a bolt right here. Just go and hold it on this connector. Take that off. Bring that to the side. And what you want to do, just so you don't lose it, put your bolt right back in there. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, the next thing we got, we got our EGR tube right here, our exhaust pipe right here. And that's held on my two 12 millimeter nuts. So I got my 12 millimeter deep, three inch drive. Go in there, and he's got these thick washers. Those washers serve as gaskets also. So what you want to do is make sure you save them and put them to the side as well. All right, let's put these to the, take these off and we'll be right back. All right, guys, the next thing we got is these, this canister right here and this little solenoid. And we're not gonna actually disconnect this one. What we're gonna do is first take off the bolt here, 12 millimeter. Swing that to the side, put our bolt back in. Now holding on the solenoid here is a 10 millimeter. So I'm switch over to my 10 millimeter deep. 3 8 drive. Pop that off. Swing that to the side. Put your bolt right back in. Now you're going to have two vacuum lines over here. Now if you're unsure about this, take your little marker, put a little mark on the intake or the plenum and on the hose so you know where it goes to. But this one, because these hoses are like this one, especially this one, has that 90 degree bend, I know this one we're gonna go right here. So we're just gonna pull that off. And notice how it's, the bend stays there. So I know that one goes there. And then this one, pull it off right here. All right, we'll be right back. All right guys, the next step, this one don't have it, uh, which is good. You're gonna need a 12 millimeter wrench or a 12 millimeter shallow socket 3 8 drive with a 3 8 drive ratchet. You will take your hand, reach your hand way back here like this. You're going to feel a bracket back there that's supposed to have two bolts going into the plenum holding it up. It's difficult to see now, but once we get this off, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, the next thing you want to do, grab you a pair of needle nose and a pair of hose pair of pliers. Hose pliers, uh, let's just do this. Back here, let me get a light. Let me get a light. Hold on, hold on. Let me get a light. I'll be right back. All right, guys, we got two clamps that has to be taken off. We got two hoses. One right here. This hose is going to the PCV valve, and then we got this one right here going to our brake booster. So I got a pair of needle nose pliers in there. Squeeze the clamp. No, it's good. You're gonna pay for that. <laughs> and this one over here. Back up. This one they gonna go, the clamp already. Gonna go over here. Then what I'm gonna do is take me a pair of hose pliers and go in there. Dang it. Pull that one off. Over this side and pull that one off. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're ready to pull up our plenum. Now, our plenum is held on by three 12 millimeter bolts and two 12 millimeter nuts, one on this side and one on this side. So, what I'm gonna do is grab my pole driver with my 3 8 drive adapter in it, my 4 inch 3 8 drive extension, and my deep 12 millimeter socket. One, two, and then the three center ones. We'll be right back. All right, guys, now, before we pick up our plenum, you're going to have two hoses right here. One right here. And that's got antifreeze going to it. And one up under here, right here. Mm. Mm, 
Yeah, I see a hose. Okay, but we're gonna leave those connected and we're gonna pick the plenum up just enough to swing it out and get that gasket. We'll be right back. All right, guys, now we're gonna pick the plenum up and then we're gonna pull outward away from that exhaust pipe. There we go. And there's our gasket. And this is where it was leaking at. Let's take this gasket up. Huh. All right, we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, I got me some <coughs> needle nose prying this up. Now, if you look back here in the back, you see that little bracket back there with the two holes in it? That's where you're gonna get two bolts coming in through the opposite side and bolt into this plenum. 12 millimeter bolts. All right, now I'm looking at this up here and I can see like uh, oil around this port and around here. And the other ones look kind of clean. Well, this one got a little bit. So I'm wondering, is that where it was coming from? Let's get a rag. I'll be right back. All right, guys, we're going to take a rag. And this definitely looks like it was leaking around here. So let's wipe all this off. You don't need no heavy abrasives or anything because it's just a rubber gasket with metal and rubber. So we're going to clean off the lower intake and then we're going to reach up under and clean the plenum. Alright, let's get this done and we'll be right back. Alright guys, I was just cleaning up under here and look at this right here. That thing is cracked. Holy cow. What the heck happened here? Oh well, this changes everything. So what I'm gonna do is lower this down, pick, pull up my tools and I'm gone. I'm done. <laughs> nah, what we gotta do now is now we're gonna do is come over this side and I'm going to put something here to close these hoses off for the antifreeze. And then we got to take this whole, we got to take this plenum out of here. All right, I'll be right back. All right, guys, I got me a pair of hose clamps right here. I'm going to have this on this side. And what I'm going to do is take my needle nose and bring this clamp back. I'm not going to take that hose off yet because I'm going to get antifreeze coming out of there. Now what I gotta do, let's see if you guys can see right down in there, you see another clamp. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna take my needle nose. And while I'm holding this intake up, bring that clamp down. Yeah. Okay, and I'm not gonna take that one off yet because now I gotta get another pair of needle nose vice grips or something and clamp the holes off around here. Then I can take both of them off. So let me find something and I'll be right back. All right guys, I got my, I switched up, got my hose pliers down here. And I had to make some contraption up here because <laughs> I have another pair. And I got a drain pan underneath for a little antifreeze that will come out. And I'm gonna grab my hose pliers. And we're gonna start disconnecting the hoses. This one. And then the one underneath. Again, you will get antifreeze coming out of here.
하나. 가봐. There we go. All right. We'll be right back. All right, guys. <coughs> Here's our plenum, and you can see the crack right there. Man, uh, nowhere else. Let's turn it over. All across there. Looks like that hole. Oh, looks like that whole section was about to pop right. Look at that. I can. Can you see I'm moving it? Oh. Oops. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, you see these in your that thing was sucking in air like crazy. That's wild. Look at that. Holy cow. Can you crazy glue it? Yeah, I bought some JB Well, guys. Cork it. No, JB Well. JB, JB Well works. Everything. You want to put some JB Well and see if it works? No. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do, <coughs> we're not even thinking, gonna, even going to even dream about a new one. We're gonna go down to the junkyard and we're gonna grab one. But what we're gonna do is make sure we take off the throttle body because that's really important to take that off. Close it right here, maybe take the solenoid off, whatever. There we go. We'll be right back. All right, so today we had a 2004 Nissan Maxima with a 3.5 engine. And we had a check engine light and it had a PO171 and a PO174. That's a, a lean on bank one and bank two. Lean condition, bank one and bank two. So in this case, it turned out to be a uh, cracked, or might as well just say broken plenum. And, but the importance of it is a visual inspection. If you hook up a computer to it, it's not going to tell you the plenum is cracked. The so, AL 539B will. Anyway. No, let me stop. Let me stop yeah. before they buy it. <laughs> yeah. So, visual, visual inspection. Very important. All right. So, if you guys have any comments or questions, you can post it below in the comment section. Or you can email Timmy at Tim at AstroAutoRepairs.com. Hope you paid attention. If not, watch it again. This is Sylvia from Astro Auto Repairs. If we can't repair it, nobody can. See you next time.